Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. I'm Carl Dukes. i Stewart. It's game time. And we are discussing the decision made today by State Attorney Willie Meggs. He decides after uh, an, a thorough investigation that Florida State quarterback Jameis Winston will not be charged. And here to, to talk with us about it and give us a little bit better insight from a legal standpoint as we try to cover all the angles is a criminal defense lawyer. He's a sports law attorney and a partner. Uh, his name is Manny Aurora. He's with Aurora and La Scala. And he is a Atlanta-based attorney. And we appreciate you coming in the studio, Manny. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Carl. Um, from a defense attorney standpoint, I, and I just let's go back and, and talk about this young lady coming forth and the information that we know about originally. Um, and Jameis Winston, you know, the original thought was obviously something happened and we didn't know. And from that point, you start to do the, you know, the thorough investigation of what took place, what happened. And as we just, you know, you heard Willie Meggs there in the update with John Jeffries, there were some discrepancies in what she was saying. Um, from your standpoint and your experience as a criminal defense attorney, was there any way that you could have taken this and attempted to charge Jameis Winston? Because sometimes we've seen prosecutors think that, well, we're going to get this guy and there's not enough. And Willie Meggs is saying there wasn't enough and we're not going to do that. Well, a lot of the um, sort of a train railroad kind of situation happens when the guys can't afford good counsel and things of that nature. And you never even really hear about it. And their jails are full of people that I think sometimes get a raw deal. But in this situation, it's not that something didn't happen. Something clearly happened based on the DNA. It's just, can they prove it? And the fact that the DA actually had the backbone to stand up in front of the national media and say, I don't think we can prove it, uh, give him a lot of credit because you don't get that from most DAs. Most DAs will say, I'd rather try it and lose it than take the heat for it. So they can put it up and then they'll blame the jury for doing something. But in this situation, you got two different types of DNA. It makes me think of Kobe Bryant. Remember when we went through that fiasco? Mm-hmm. You got the Ben Roethlisberger situation where the girl can't necessarily remember all the details. It doesn't make them bad people or good people or anything else. It's just you can't prove the case, and therefore you got to do the right thing as a DA and say, we can't prove it, we're not charging somebody. Um, I know in this case, and, and I'm not sure here about the state of Georgia, but you know th- this was not going to a grand jury. This was his decision to make. Is that is that the norm, or usually does it go to a grand jury? Could this have gone to a grand jury? Well, if we remember the last famous case they've had down in Florida, they could have taken it to a grand jury and ended the whole thing had the grand jury chosen not to indict, but the DAs down there have the ability to bring it up themselves if they choose to. In Georgia, it has to go to a grand jury, but let's not convolute ourselves or make ourselves think that grand jury really means much of anything. I mean, there's hundreds of cases indicted on a daily basis here in Georgia and Fulton County, and it takes about, you know, two to three minutes per case to get the thing indicted. So it's not exactly there's some, this long sifting investigation that goes on. The police officer comes in. There's no rules of evidence. They say what they have to say. Then the grand jurors vote. And typically you can knock out 50 to 100 cases in downtown Atlanta on the grand jury days. So it's I, I don't put a lot of stock into that. Mm. Manny, you think the pressures of, of the Heisman Trophy committee and, and having a chance to win a Heisman Trophy, Jameis Winston, to play in the national championship had a big part of, of, of why the decision had to be made today and will – Two-part question answer here. Do you think the young lady have an opportunity to come back later to try to start this case up one more time? Because it seems like the pressures of the Heisman Trophy has caused an answer to come out now, but yet the lady may not be done with trying to figure out if she can get a fair trial. Well, as we know, I mean, the lady made the complaint back in December of last year, so they've had essentially a year to work this case out. And I don't know what the timing issues with the DA. I don't know if he'd necessarily care, even though he's in Tallahassee, about the Heisman Trophy. But at some point, you've got to cut it loose because there's only so much investigation you can do. Right. And what we know from their statements is she wasn't sure about exactly what happened. Mr. Winston's got a couple of witnesses that would corroborate what he's saying may have happened. And it just looked like a really weak case. The, the timing will speak for itself. But at some point, you've got to say there's nothing to investigate. The second question you asked, she can come back and go for a civil suit against him. Uh, presuming he's a wealthy man in the NFL in the next couple of years. She can do that. She can always do that. Uh, I hate to keep throwing old cases, but think OJ. You're acquitted on one thing, but then you go back to civil uh, court because the standard is much, much lower. It's preponderance of the evidence, a.k.a. 51% versus beyond a reasonable doubt. So she always has the right within two years in most jurisdictions to come back and file a civil suit for any wrong somebody may have done against you. We're talking with Manny Aurora here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game, uh, Atlanta-based attorney, criminal defense and sports law attorney with Aurora and La Scala here in the ATL. When you talk about sharing the evidence, uh, go through that process with us as a defense attorney. Was Jameis Winston's defense aware of everything that the prosecutors had all the way up until the day, until this press conference, or or, or is that held back? And at what point are they, they given that information? 
prosecutors are all different. I've you know, dealt with over the last 20 years lots of different theories. Sometimes they'll give us the evidence up front if they think their case is strong so they can get a quick guilty plea after there's an indictment or an accusation. In some cases, they hold it close to the vest. We don't know what the relationship was here between the defense lawyer uh, and the government attorney, but there doesn't seem to be a whole lot out there. The witnesses are all pretty much known as to who's doing it because it's all been public. They could have interviewed those people if they chose to. The only surprise might have been the DNA when it came out this past summer. But if he told his lawyer that, you know, we, we had sex or I was there, th then they expected the DNA to show up. And the DNA by itself doesn't show anything. The rape kit would have been the important thing if there had been any physical trauma or something that would indicate outward signs of force. And apparently that probably didn't happen in this case either. Otherwise, that makes the case pretty simple for the government. Manny, I guess, and, and my point to asking that question is, how soon do you think Jameis Winston and his, and his attorneys knew no charges were going to be filed? Well, from you know what we read, they, it seems like they sort of knew when the case went inactive about back in April of this year that nothing was really going to come of it. There was some more testing to be done. And in fact, the testing actually helped him where the alcohol came back almost non-existent. There was no date rape drugs. There was nothing like that in there. And which really undermines a story that I can't remember these details because I was so drunk doing shots at a bar. So, I mean, that's a big hole for the government to fill to say, you know, I can't remember because I'm drunk. But then the blood toxicology, just a few hours after the incident apparently took place, says you really didn't have much in your system, if anything. Let's bring this down to the everyday Joe, because this is Jameis Winston, the quarterback at Florida State, high profile program teams going to potentially play for a national championship. Obviously, there's a lot of attention, but these kind of cases go on all the time, don't they? Every single day. There's probably, I don't know, half a dozen trials going on right now while we're talking. And, and you know, when you break this down, um, as you mentioned when we started this interview, I mean, a lot of folks necessarily don't necessarily get the, the right advice or the right legal counsel. And so they end up in a situation where maybe they are charged. Maybe they didn't do what they're being accused of doing. You know, and I'm talking about the everyday guy who's out having a good time and then a situation turns bad and you go, uh-oh, I, I was there, but I didn't do anything. I mean, that's what's crazy about this, and this is getting a lot of press, obviously, because of who he is and, and where he is. Well, you know, everybody says if you're famous or if you're wealthy, somehow you can buy your way out. And I just I say that's just complete garbage because when you can afford it or hire people that can put the appropriate amount of time into a case up front, it's amazing how many holes you can point out or how many inconsistencies you can dig up versus being some guy that's got to handle 500 cases in a courtroom and you're triaging everything. Things fall through the cracks. So... Fortunately for him, he had the ability, whether he could pay this lawyer, he did a pro bono, whatever, he got somebody competent, got on top of it from the beginning, and he was able to expose the case. Kobe Bryant's defense lawyers did that. They didn't make up those facts. They just had the money to investigate it, challenge the DNA, do all the intelligent things, hard work things that need to be done. Um, you know, that's a lot of guys don't get that don't have money or, you know, may be indigent. Manny Aurora, our guest here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. We're going to keep him for a few more minutes here. We're trying to cover all the different angles. I wanted to get a legal perspective on this case because it's one thing to talk about whether we think Jameis Winston did this, but at the end of the day, it is about the legal process. It is about the burden of proof. And if he would have gone to court, this would have been uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, correct? They would have had to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did this sexual assault. And obviously, Willie Meggs, the attorney, the state attorney there in Florida, says that they were not going to be able to prove that. Um, one of the things I do want to point out, and you mentioned this, that the young lady said that they were out having a good time and, and multiple shots and the toxicology reports came back and it wasn't as much alcohol um, as I guess she thought that, that it probably was at the time. How often does that play a role in situations like this where, you know, we were drinking, we're having a great time and things got carried away? Because we, we seem to hear that all the time when it comes to sports figures. Sure. Well, I mean, it's almost a cottage industry. I'm not saying that's what happened in this case because he was basically not even in college essentially at that point when supposedly a lot of this happened. But the idea is when it's just your word against somebody else's, generally the person that gets to the police first gets to be the believable person. So from there as a defense lawyer, you have to say what independently through science, through fact, through records can I show to undermine what that person is saying? So if you're on record saying I was too drunk, I essentially blacked out, and the records show otherwise, then you've got a pretty good start to your case. Uh, the only issue is going to be is how many hours after the incident did she actually get her blood tested that came back with all these negative results. I would imagine it's within a couple of hours where we would expect to see that. Otherwise, it wouldn't nearly be the biggest, a big deal as the DA is making it in this case. 
I think I need Manny's number. <laughs> just in case. Just don't get in trouble. Just, 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 you, never, you, know, you never know. I need a good defense attorney's uh, uh, on speed dial. Manny, thank you so much. I know it's taking uh, some time out of your day, but this is a huge case, and we definitely wanted to get your perspective on this. Partner at Aurora and La Scala here in Atlanta, criminal defense attorney, sports law attorney, uh, Manny Aurora. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Colonel Correll. I really Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, it's, uh, it, this is, is interesting on many different levels, Cordell, but you know now – as we turn the page, and I do want to hear what you think about this, your reaction to this news today at 404-741-0929. If you have a reaction, maybe you're like, you know what, this is over, it's done. But I will tell you, moving forward now, I want to see what happens Saturday. I want to see how he plays. There's been a lot of pressure, and maybe that pressure's been driving this young man to play out of his mind as he's been over the last few weeks. Now that this is over, now that this is done, is there a letdown? Is there something that Jameis Winston, you know, goes out on the field and, and maybe doesn't perform as well in that Duke ACC championship game? Your reaction to the news, Winston not charged today after the sexual assault investigation uh, ran its course. 404-741-0929. Carl Dukes, Cordell Stewart. It's game time on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game.